week when we worship together, there is a theme. There is a common thread that binds everything together, a through line. And part of the fun of developing a Sunday morning experience and sermon is to highlight in different ways this common theme. And our hope is that you walk away from church having your mind, your heart, and your soul messed with in a good way. Sometimes, uh, oftentimes, it's good to get the soil of of your soul, your heart, and your brain turned over to consider life in a new way. This morning, we have three scriptures to consider. The first one, Jeremiah, woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Ephesians, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also the members of the household of God. And then Mark, as he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so he began to teach them many things. So this morning we have sheep scattered by terrible, poor shepherds. We have people called to be members of the household of God. And you have other sheep needing a shepherd and Jesus beginning that work. These readings all build a sense that these people need something. They need care, they're lost, or they can be lost because they're not cared for. Have you ever really felt lost? Like, really lost? It's actually a really terrifying feeling. When I was little, and my mom would go clothes shopping, uh, I loved to play with the shopping racks. You know, those uh, little circles of pants or shirts. And uh, I would dive in the middle and instantly be transported into my own little fort or nest <laughs> right inside J.C. Penney or Sears. And I thought it was hilarious when my mom would call out to me because I would be quiet as a mouse inside my, my slacks lined fort. And then I would dive out and tackle her legs as she passed by. It was all fun and games until one day she lost me. Or maybe better said, I lost her. And I popped out of my static-filled fort, and she was gone. Nowhere to be found. And I looked all over. Couldn't find her. And then panic set in. I couldn't see above the circle clothes racks, because I was a little kid. I was short. And all of a sudden, it wasn't fun any longer. This was serious. I lost my mom. But, you know, I was seven, you know, practically a grown-up, so I figured out a plan, and I hopped on an escalator. I started riding it up to a level, and then finding the down escalator, and riding it down a level, and up a level, and down a level, and using my newfound height from the escalator for a bird's eye view above the racks. And to add fuel to the fire, I began to yell for my mom as loud as I could as I went up and down the escalators. And in a short period of time, moms from all over the store were looking in my direction, trying to see if they knew this wayward soul. You see, I had collected all these moms since I simply had been screaming the word mom over and over and not using my mom's actual name. Much to my relief, my mom, Karen, heard my mournful cry and collected me from my escalator. I buried my head in her side and was so relieved to have been found. There are several overarching themes in the whole Bible, the entirety of it. One of the major ones is the people of Israel. They are both a real and symbolic people. Their community in the Bible stood for something greater than themselves, because you see, they had a mission, a mission that started with their people and then expanded to the rest of the world, that through them, all the lost things of this world would be gathered, lost things found, and that through the people of Israel, God's love for all of humanity would be, would be on display the entire world. 
You see the circles widening. You see the sheep being found. And you see new citizens and saints being added to the community. If you look through the Bible, Old Testament and New, you can see a pattern develop almost every time God gets mad or disappointed. It almost always has to do with their mission as a community to love, to serve, and to take care of others. And when they fail to love people, to offer grace, to care for the poor, to help the widow or the immigrant, that is when God corrects them, sometimes harshly. Even today, one of the ways that you can determine if a biblically functioning community is fulfilling its mission is if it's growing, if it's finding lost souls and bringing them into the fold. Our circles widening, our sheep being found, and our citizens, new citizens and saints being invited into the community. You see, the church by design is made to grow because our mission, our mission, your mission is to find lost people and bring them into the fold. It always bothers me when I hear that this church or another church is like the best kept secret in town. It's it's not meant to be a secret. It's meant to be a light on on a hill. In our second reading today, Paul admonishes the Ephesian church for adding qualifications to receiving God's grace. They were saying, in essence, you you can be a part of this community. Grace is waiting for you, but only only if you're Jewish first, or eat just this kind of food, or are circumcised, look like us, talk like us. Paul, Paul writes them and says, no, Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. The good news for us already in the fold is it's not our job to determine the qualifications for inclusion in God's house. It's God's. And I have to tell you, God has swung the doors wide open. Everyone is welcome. In fact, everyone is invited. And I love, I love how open and accepting our church and our denomination is over every kind of person. And I believe we have an amazing opportunity to invite folks to our community that aren't finding a safe place anywhere else. We can be that safe place. I love this section of our welcome statement. All are worthy of God's love and grace. We celebrate diversity and seek to be inclusive of every race, ethnicity, faith background, age, economic status, political affiliation, sexual orientation, gender identity, mental ability, or anything else that divides us. Christ's church is not ours to control, nor is it our job to sort, divide, categorize, or exclude, but it is our place to love all of our neighbors, aid the less fortunate, and to be a voice on their behalf. My friends, There are a lot of lost sheep out there. Daily, I'm meeting more and more people that need a church with that kind of welcome statement. And I truly think we may be on the shore watching a fleet of boats and rafts and and life rings floating in of people who need a community that will be their refuge. And I'm so excited for the next years of this community, and I believe that we can be a port of safety for all kinds of people. 
Amen.